My name is Daniel Guise. I'm the creative and technical director here at ED Films. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a dynamic parenting for characters' limbs using, you know, if you use something like Duic, this is a really easy way to, a relatively easy way to make it so that your character's hands and feet can be attached to various objects and if you can fade between them. So we're not having to create multiple rigs or abrupt switching, which is hard to animate and blend into manually. So this will take care of this all, all for you automatically. This script was created by Colin Harvey. He's a really talented coder and he does a lot of great stuff with After Effects and he helped me create this while we were working together on our Twitch stream. So I'm gonna show you how to take the code that he made and apply it to your own characters. So we have this really basic scene I have a couple of little objects in here. I've got a really basic character rig we're going to put together and uh, a few different targets. And I'll show you how we can set this up. It seems a little complicated at first, but it's actually not so bad. So we're going to go into Duic. We're going to do a an auto rig. So we'll go, we open Duic. We encourage you to download it if you're doing character animation. It's from Rainbox. Uh, you go over there, it's free. I would encourage you also, if you're doing it for work, um, to give them a donation. So you go to auto rig. And if you can't find Duic, it's going to be in here down at the window somewhere. So let's go auto rig. We're going to do front arm and leg. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure we select all the layers that are going to be involved in this rigging process. Front leg and arm. I have a clavicle, I have an upper arm, and then I have a lower arm and I have a hand. So it found most of them. Okay, we'll press OK. So we've created a rig, really basic. I tend to like to add a little bit of sliding on the clavicle for translation. It just feels a little more realistic. Great. And the next thing we're going to do is we want to parent the, the chest right now. Nothing's parented to it. We have to parent this zero object to the chest, not the actual clavicle. The actual clavicle is parented to the zero object. Do it creates this to help with the math and driving everything. So we'll parent this guy, and now the clavicle will follow along. All right, so let's just take this guy's position, and we're going to alt-click. I copied and pasted Colin's code which I'll include in the description down below, so you can copy and paste it as well. Make sure it looks something like this. There might be some spacing things that happen when you copy and paste it. I'm gonna get rid of this extra target. I added a target. We have an E target as well. We don't need that right now. We only have one, two, three, four targets right now. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put that on. It's gonna tell us we have a problem. What it's actually looking for is it's looking for these things called layer controls. And the layer controls are going to tell this little script where to find its information. It's going to look for the, the layer, the target layer, and it's going to take its position and find its um, anchor point position in space. So we need to tell it what layer it's using. So we like to use layer controllers because that means you can swap objects without going into the code. And I'll show you how that works. So the first thing we want to add to this controller is we want to add an expression control and we'll call it a layer control and this will be called target space a make sure you name it just like i've named it because it's actually deriving that name from the code itself so if you want to name it something different then you need to change this to whatever you want to name it to and then just make sure that these are named appropriately as well okay so right now i would suggest if you're not experienced with coding i would just keep the names as they are and make sure you include the spaces Okay, so I'm setting this up so I have four targets. I could add more. If you want to add more, you just put them in the list here. Add as many as you want. Okay, so this is target one. So let's put this to target one for A, target two for B, target three. You can have the, the actual targets named whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It's just you have to make sure that your layer controllers are named properly. The next target is looking for a fade controller. And the fade controller is going to determine what the what percentage any one of these targets will actually drive the wrist here. So what we have to add is we have to add one more um, layer target controller, layer controller. And we'll just leave it the way it is right here. And this is going to be called fade control layer. So fade control layer. Again, make sure you match what I'm spelling here. If you if you spell this wrong, it's not going to find it. You could also just copy and paste it straight from the code right up here. Okay. This the reason this is here, this is a little bit redundant, is if you wanted a different layer to control these from. So you you'll see what I mean. This is something that's a, I use because I usually use a different layer to drive all these things. I don't usually like to stack all these controls on my wrist controller, but so this can allow, this allows you, so if you want to put your fade controls on different objects, 
um, you can do that and you can tell it to look somewhere else. We're going to put the fade controls right in this. So we're, we're just going to tell it to look back at itself here. Okay, I don't know if that makes sense. It might be a bit confusing for people who are new at this. Okay, so now we want to do slider controls. And with these, we're going to call these fade A. And we'll duplicate this out. Fade B. Fade C. Fade D. Remember to name this exactly the same as I'm naming it with a space. Okay, so these are all the controls that we actually need to get things working. And you'll see now our error has gone away because the script is finding everything that it's looking for. So the first thing we might, might want to do before we start trying to animate is you notice how this is just jumping rapidly? The code in here is looking for a value between 0 and 1. So we have a weight of 0, and we're looking for a total weight of 1, essentially. Um, it works the best that way between 0 and 1. So what I would recommend doing is on, on these faders here, I would go go in here and I will edit the value and make sure that it's going, this range is from 0 to 1, not 0 to 100. 0 to 1. I thought maybe I could do this all at once, but it doesn't seem to be letting me. Okay. And edit value from 0 to 1. So now it won't be so touchy. So now when you try to blend the two, now you can just drag it and it'll work properly. Now the really fun thing about this is you can mix them together. All right, so that all works just great. So now what we now what we can do is let's just start putting some animation on that wrist, for instance. So we'll save here. Um, I'm going to grab, let's just put a position value on this thing. We don't need this code so much anymore. And let's just move this wrist around. We'll do some things. I'm not really animating wrist rotation, and we can do that. It's just, I'm just doing the arm position right now. So now what we can do is we have all our faders. We technically don't really need any of this stuff to be visible anymore, so we can lock it up and just hide it away like this. It keeps it clean. So we have our target one. We don't really even need to see this pivot. That's part of like the thing that's allowing this thing to spin. So let's just hide that away. OK, great. So now what we can do is now let's just make this hand target onto something. So we'll take, I want to use a little pink guy. That's target number three, so that'll be C. And you could name these a little bit better. So if we want to, we could always change these to be target C. You can change them after the fact. It's not really a problem. If you're finding it a bit confusing, let's just rename these things. Sorry. Target A, B, C, D. It's really up to you. It doesn't matter. So we need fade C. Here we are. This is our slider that we're going to fade from. Right now it's at 0, and we want to put it to 1. When do we want it to put, put it to 1? Maybe we'll like have the character reach and grab right here. As fast as they can, 1. Bup. You'll see the character reaches and grabs, and now their arm is attached, hopelessly attached to that spinning wheel. So now we can also disengage from that wheel. So we'll go here, and let's put them on to fade number B, or fade letter B, sorry. So 0 and 1. Boop, there we go. So now it will continue to follow that arm. Boop, now it's on that guy. And then if we want, we can just put this to 0, and it will go back to doing its original animation. And on the orange guy, let's just do like, we can put anything we want. We can we can tell it to have a wiggle on it. So let's just do wiggle. Uh, we'll do it three times and 50. There we go. So this is going to just wiggle around all over the place. And he's going to grab onto that thing. Or There. We'll just put it there because it's... Okay, so this could be like a motorcycle handle that the characters just grabbed onto. And then, of course, we can reset back. The other thing we can do, which is really helpful, we're going to take this blue target, and I'm just going to parent it really quickly to the hand because I want to get its position exactly matched. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this now, and I'm going to parent it to the chest. So now that now this guy follows the chest, okay? Do so you see that? Great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so this target A here when we switch to target A, it means it will follow the chest. So let's go here. We'll just move our timeline over a little bit. And let's just animate the chest moving around a bit. There we go. So now what we can do is we'll take that hand, obviously, and let's actually, instead of parenting it to 0, where it goes to 0 here, let's fade it into the target A. 
There we go. So now, if we fade to target A, bump, it will follow around that character's body. Now we can animate target A's position. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's how it all works. It's really basic. I think, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to see what you guys can do with it, but I think it's a, it's a real time saver, and though it may not seem that interesting, um, it's extremely valuable. So thank you, Colin Harvey, for the script, and thanks for helping me integrate that into my workflow. Okay, great. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate the continued support, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.